So, hi, we're full student. Oh, no, I've already done it. Wrong. <laughs> cool. Sorry. Um, and from the end of year nine through year 10, we investigated radiation levels with data provided by IRIS from the ISS. Um, the data was given to us on Excel spreadsheets, and like each one had over two, like 20,000 lines. This was like, they had so much, there was so much that we had to put it onto like graphs and stuff, but this did not give us the coordinates, so. Um, in order to show the coordinates of each energy reading, we put it onto a world map using a website called ArcGIS. Um, unfortunately, there were too many data points on the Excel spreadsheets, and this overwhelmed the map. To, to cut down on the number of data points per map, uh, we focused on energy levels over 150,000 kilo electron volts, as high energy levels seemed more appealing to study. Um, so using the map, oh, I can't find the last point. Um, this revealed three distinct patterns rather than random distribution like we'd expect. So we've got two bands at roughly 50 degrees north and south. and um, a very large hotspot over South America and the South Atlantic Ocean. Um, with research, we found that the reason that there's none above like 50 degrees north and south is because the ISS thing doesn't orbit around there, so we couldn't get any readings for those. That's why it's like that. So. Um, we identified the other pattern, the hotspot, as being South Atlantic anomaly, which is a well-documented phenomenon. It was first um, discovered in 1958. Um, it's so well known, in fact, that a lot of commercial airplanes are required to have shielding when they go over this area. Our first idea for an explanation of this anomaly were, was a celestial event. So to test this, we looked at data six months and a year apart. Uh, we saw no changes across these different data sets, meaning that the cause is not noticeably influenced by the Earth's position in its orbit. Uh, this ruled out most plausible celestial events. So we then found our attention drawn to possible terrestrial causes, um, the first of which was Brazil nuts. We discounted this theory because the times for growth and harvest didn't match our maps. We also considered um, El Nino and La Nina, but then we figured out it was on the west side of South America, so we cancelled that on that as well. Um, there are both nuclear power plants and uranium mines in the area of the anomaly, but other areas which have higher quantity and bigger uranium mines and nuclear power plants um, don't have hotspots over them, so we ruled this out. We then began researching into uh, other possible causes, including the possibility of a hole in the plasma sphere. Uh, during this research, we found articles that posed the idea that the South Atlantic anomaly is actually as a result of the inner Van Allen belt dipping lower into the atmosphere than normal. Uh, due, this is due to the offset of the mag Earth's magnetic poles to its rotational axes. Uh, the articles further suggested that this could be, as a, uh, this could be leading up to a pole flip, uh, which is you know, when the north and south magnetic poles switch places, basically. Um, these are now what we believe to be the most accepted theories. Um, the skills we learned, we learned time management, which like we learned how to meet deadlines and analyze large amounts of data in like short time periods. Um, we had to deal with a lot of problems going through our project, um, one of which was our teacher losing quite a bit of our data. So we had to adapt and start to back up our data more. Um, we also developed our presentation skills. So we performed um, to quite a few classes in school and um, have developed our formatting skills through our poster and our PowerPoints. Um, we've also gained a lot of IT skills and we're able to use Excel quite well, as well as other software that we had to use in order to do this, such as ArcGIS for mapping. Also, our data analysis has greatly increased skill-wise because we can, we can sort out a document of 20,000 lines on Excel in, what, a minute, two minutes? Uh, 
Um, finally, we learned how to work together as a group through what was probably an unhealthy amount of time spent together as a small group. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> So why were you studying radiation levels? Was there like something you were particularly looking for or was it just a general analysis? Um, okay, so we came into this uh, out of our astronomy GCSE. So we were already focused in that kind of field. Um, and it's part of the reason why we chose the Tinfix project out of all the ones available. It's not even it's to do with the International Space Station, that's cool. Um, <laughs> And uh, we weren't really trying to find anything with our data as much as see what there was to see. Um, it didn't really have a, a purpose or a solid hypothesis. We were just uh, trying to find out if there was anything to find out. Thank you. Um, on your diagram there, you've got a lot of different colours. What do they represent? Are they different particles or...? Okay. So RTIS is a funny old software. Um, <laughs> uh, the the colours we think it it latched on to something else. Katie's the expert on this really the colours, um, but they don't really mean that all that much at all. Yeah. Um, the colours are literally just the order that RTIS has. So I think it goes like red, orange, and then blue, and then it goes to greens and stuff. But there is no specific order. It's all on one of the sheets. But it's basically just the number, and the actual level of data isn't that important. But the number, because it's all just above 150,000 kilo electric volts. So we were not looking at like the, the actual values, because we were just looking at the higher parts. We were looking at the higher parts and the location specifically. So we, because we took it as a bracket rather than the individual um, <coughs> spikes. So there were data values, and they're probably the ones that are coming from colours. There, there were ones that uh, were well up in the 300,000 kilo electron volts. Um, but yeah, they, we didn't focus on those because those were quite random. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much for your